Today on Cryptic Mask Guitar, we take two EHX pedals, the Dr. Q Envelope Follower. We got the Big Box Edition and we got the Nano Edition. Let's see if they're the exact same or if there's some major differences. <laughs> So now let's get into the similarities and differences of this pedal. Now, I have the Dr. Q Nano, which I've already done a review, which you can check out. I'll post something at the end of the video so you can check that out as well. So we have the Nano here on our green side, and you will notice with the uh, LS2 line selector, we have a green LED. Green is going to be for our Nano. And then we have the original big box version that we're reviewing today, and that's going to be on our red side. As you can see, red cords, pretty easy to follow. So. Off the bat, physically, we have two different styles of power supplies, as you can see here. And if you notice right now by looking at your screen, you can tell that one switch is in the down position with our original Dr. Q and then in the up position with our Nano. The reason for that is, is the uh, position in the base switch that allows all your frequencies to come through are in two different positions. So if you want all those frequencies and you don't just want the envelope effect, with the Nano, you have to have the switch in the up position. With the original, the switch is in the down position. So keep that in mind. That's why those are going to be in two different positions while we're doing this. Looking at our, our knobs, knobs are pretty much the same uh, type of usage. Obviously, they're different. One's got like the chicken head type, and then we have our new style EHX knobs that we have now. Uh, both switches are great switches. Biggest difference is size that one thing with the switch, and then how do you power supply it. So moving on now, here is our clean tone. Just a nice clean tone so you guys can hear what this pedal is actually doing when we go to review each of the uh, different sides here. So again. already all the way down you can hear that very low effect kind of sounds like your tone knobs all the way back and you're just using a little tiny bit of wah so now let's switch over to our big box version already hear a little bit of a difference in the tone um, let's play with a little bit more dynamics because this will actually uh, create the effect to kind of do a pulsating thing or really come out uh, in the mix Pretty similar, uh, volume difference is very minimal as well. Now let's uh, bring our knobs up a little bit, I'm trying to make them exact as possible. Yes, depending on the old pots and the new pots and any pots in general, they can be quite different, but it shouldn't be a drastic difference between uh, two of the exact same pedal as they say and kind of advertise it as. Big difference there with the uh, the amount that's coming through there and the dynamics of the playing. Let's 
try to adjust the uh, nano to see if we can kind of get something a little bit closer. So we're going to turn that up a bit. Kind of close. Uh, you can see how much more the uh, the Nano is turned up than the original big box version. Uh, also, with the this one has a little bit more musicality with the uh, the swells. Okay, let's turn it up a little bit. We'll go to the 12 o'clock position with both. Uh, you can hear a lot more low end with the Nano. Uh, I will turn that up just a little bit like we did the last time. But I'm also hearing a lot more wispiness of the envelope follower coming through with the big box version. <laughs> Still hearing a lot more lower end coming through with the uh, the nano, and I'm hearing a lot less wispiness coming through the nano as well. <laughs> But I'm also noticing a lot more reactiveness with the uh, the big version of this pedal. All right, moving on now. Let's see how far we can get with the uh, the nano before we max out. <laughs> more pleasant to the ear with the nano obviously as you can hear you can hear you can hear the psh, psh. Trying to get those kind of lined up together, but this is starting to get a lot more degraded with the higher end. Um, let's max these two pedals out now. Less, more wispiness uh, coming into the front end. Um, 
with the uh, the Nano. Now this is adjustable with a trim pod inside. If you take this apart, you will see a trim pod that you can kind of balance it or have a little bit less of the wispiness, but then you're gonna lose some of the filter. And if you turn that wispiness up, you're gonna lose some of your original signal. So you gotta be really careful where you're bringing that back and forth. You gotta have a good balance. So if you want a little bit more of what this can do with this, you're gonna have to turn that up. Or if you want less, then you turn it down. So now let's turn them all the way back again. And let's listen to what uh, the switches with just the envelope follower uh, sounds like between the two and how dramatic both are or usable both are. So with the Nano. Very much the same. Let's turn this up a little bit. You can really hear how much more dynamic the original cue is and how much more reactive it is to your playing, especially when you strike harder. up to the 12 o'clock position this is where I think we're going to start hearing a lot more um, just nastiness between the two pedals Now we're starting to get in with the Nano being a lot more uh, musically operable than the other one. That one's starting to turn into just whispers in the wind. Big difference in the sound there. So let's go here. You're still getting a little bit of noise out of this. Um, musically, you're getting more notes coming through. You're getting a lot more of the, uh, the feedback from the effect on the, uh, the big box. Very kind of buried there. And let's turn it all the way up. both fairly inaudible. Um, let's go back up to 12 o'clock position again here. Getting a lot more out of the, uh, the Nano than I am out of this one now dynamically. Still getting a lot more spikiness out of this one, especially with the but it's a lot more buried in the mix than what this one is doing. So this concludes my shootout of these two EHX Dr. Q envelope followers.
craziest thing about this uh, shootout is how divided I am with these two pedals. Where this pedal shines, this one can do it, but not to the same extent. And where this shines, this cannot do it to the same extent. So depending on how you uh, really care about your picking attack, um, this one's really gonna pronounce those nuances you're playing and your striking of your strings more so than this one. But if you don't like the noise that this thing produces, this is a lot better uh, for taming back that noise, but you're not going to get that dynamic playing and accentuated uh, hits that you would with this pedal. Also, some people really don't like this style of power supply. I prefer this. It doesn't bother me that I have uh, things because I have extensions for these types of uh, pedals, but that could be a defining factor. Also, the size of this can be a defining factor of this, and some people just don't care. They got a big enough pedal board, not as many pedals that this doesn't bother in having on their board. Both uh, very well built pedals, um, both excellent sounding pedals, both have their faults, both have things that really shine. Uh, I've never been so divided, <laughs> I gotta honestly say that, but I wouldn't turn my face from one to the other. Um, I like how this accentuates my playing. I like how much less noisy this pedal is. So I hope I've been helping you distinguish what one is right for you or not. Till next time, I'm Kevin of Cryptic Mask Guitar. Take care.